exchange rates are obviously a very important part of economics and understanding international trade. So let's take a second to really think through kind of exchange rates uh, in the most general sense. So I've gone out here to Bloomberg uh, real quick so we can get a good feel for current exchange rates. And so this is the United States dollar to the European Euro. And the European Euro is used, I think it's used by 17 countries now. Um, obviously your main countries are Germany, uh, Italy, Spain, right? Kind of continental Europe is using the Euro. And if we really look at this kind of, I've got a few things here that I wanna take a look at. And you could look at this on, right? You could look at it on Yahoo, you could look at it on Google, any number of foreign exchange sites. But here what we're looking at in the chart is five years worth of data. And what we're looking at is the relationship of how many euros does one US dollar purchase? And you'll often see it written as this USD to EUR or USD to, uh, to, to Great British Pounds, right? To, to uh, GBP, things like that. So uh, really what we're seeing here is that one United States dollar can buy 0.74 since European, right, Euro since. And uh, here we can also see that that changes over time as well. So let's kind of look through and kind of, uh, let's try to write this down as we're going through it. So I'm gonna toggle back and forth um, here between our board that we can write on. And the exchange rate that we're looking at here, we, we can kind of summarize a few of these things. So today, right, we were just looking at this. And we said that the price the price of one dollar, right, at a price of one dollar, you can purchase, and this is the symbol for euros here, you can purchase 74 cents of euros. And if, you, if we were to reverse this, if we just took uh, one divided by 0 0.74, so if we tried to find how many euros, uh, or how many dollars does one euro purchase, if we just write it the other direction, uh, this would be a dollar 35. So a dollar 35 is equal to one euro. And I just write this so that you can see that it's always the inverse, right? The inverse is true no matter if you're looking at it from the perspective of US dollars or if you're looking at the perspective of the other currency itself. Uh, so let's kind of put this in context here. Uh, and I'll just write that out, context here. And let's say that you've got, context, let's say that you've got $5. And you want to know how many euros would that be, right? Well, that $5 is equal to, if we were to convert that, we've got the $5 here, right? And if we multiply it by this exchange rate, which is uh, which is 0 0.74, and I'll put the uh, units here, right? It's 0 0.74 euros, oh, sorry, euros per U, per one US dollar. And so our, exchange, our dollars would, would uh, cross out and we have five times 0 0.74. And so that $5 is the equivalent of five times 0 0.74, which is, oh, undo, which is three euros and 70 cents. And so it kind of puts into perspective how many euros you could purchase with $5, right? With $1, you can purchase 0.74, right? You can purchase 74 uh, cents of euros. So I think we've got that. Now one of the things we want to take a look at is kind of the highs and lows because what we do know about market exchange rates is that they change over time for a number of different reasons. Market stability, economic uh, kind of economic uh, wins that we'll see. Uh, obviously the euro was having a very hard time kind of in late 2009, 2010 and so we saw some fluctuations there. And let's actually just look at here's the kind of the minimum and here is the maximum. So we can get a good feel over the last five years of what's the range that the US dollar, how many euros has the US dollar been able to purchase? So here at the minimum point, it was right around 0 0.66. And so that was, let's kind of change this here. And let's say, what was our low that we were looking at? The low point that we were looking at was, it was November of 2009, right? And at, the, at that point, we had $1. The exchange rate was $1 could purchase 0 0.66 cents euro cents and if we if we do right if we kind of do one divided by this if we solve for one euro then then we can solve for that is one dollar and fifty two cents so one dollars and fifty two cents was equal to one euro here as well if we just kind of transform it so if we let's put this in the same context what do we have uh, we have that five dollars if we just keep that exact same five dollars 
And if we were to convert it at this exchange rate, we've got $5, and I'll keep the dollars here, times 0 0.66 euros per dollars. We know those dollars, dollars cancel out. We have 5, .5 5 times 0 0.66, which gives us euros of three, three, euro, three, dollar, three euros and 30 cents here. And so here we can see that that five dollars purchases less euros. And so when the exchange rate decreases, when we see this decrease, we call this depreciation, right? We call this a depreciation. And that depreciation is just when that US dollar purchases less of a foreign currency. We also had the high, if we go back here to the exchange rate, uh, here we can see that right in here was kind of the high that we saw uh, right at, uh, I think it was right at 0 0.84 at its very maximum. And so if we come back over here, let me just change the colors and we can look at the high. And the high that we had, uh, that was, I had that down in June of 2010. And at that point, one US dollar would purchase 0 0.84 euros. And the kind of the inverse exchange rate in terms of one euro, that was $1.19 is equal to one euro. And let's just do the exact same context here to kind of put it in perspective. We have that same $5. And if we convert that $5, we have those $5 times the exchange rate of 0 0.84 euros per dollar. The dollars cancel out. If I take 5 times 0 0.84, I get euros of 420. And here we can see that that $5 purchases much more euros, right? In June of 2010, compared with uh, really just about six months before, you could purchase a lot more European goods with your United States dollars. And this is what we call appreciation, right? This is appreciation. When you can purchase more, when you can purchase more foreign uh, currency with your domestic currency. So we'll take a stop there before we go into thinking about, this is all nominal exchange rates that we've been looking at, right? This is just really market exchange rates right here that we were really focusing on, the market exchange rate. And now we're going to think through, okay, well, what if we think about it in terms of real exchange rates?